Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Would you put your hands together and welcome live on stage one of Ireland's top international comedians, Sean Connors. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. You're all very welcome. Now, I was in O'Sullivan's bar the other night when Mickey Delaney was sitting there with his wife having a drink, watching the National Lottery on television. When she said, Delaney, if I won the lottery, would you still love me? Delaney says, Mary, of course I'd still love you, but I'd really miss you. <laughs> so Mary attacks him with a razor. He was lucky it wasn't plugged in at the time. You see, Mary was a boxer, and her father was a cocker spaniel. No, really, I'm only joking, really. Mary was a maniot kleptak. She used to walk into shops backwards and leave things. <laughs> Delaney's panel, Sean, rang his wife up. He said, Patsy, I won two million on the national lottery. Pack a case quick. She says, will I pack winter or summer clothes? He says, it doesn't matter once you've left that house before I get home. <laughs> it's funny, you joke. Delaney parked his... Turbo JCB GT outside the pub. He walked in wearing his flared wellies. He was taking little short steps because the string was still at the back. <laughs> the barman says, Delaney, where have you been? He says, I've been at home for the last two weeks. He says, I know, but where were you? What were you doing? He says, I was doing a puzzle. So what kind of a puzzle? He says, it's called a jigsaw puzzle. He says, how long did it take you? He says, it took me two weeks. He says, and you are right, Egypt, taking two weeks to do a simple jigsaw puzzle. Delaney says, I am not. It says on the box, four to six years. <laughs> Another fellow walked into the bar, he had a big bandage on each ear. I says, what happened to your ear? He says, I was ironing and the phone rang. I says, what happened to your other ear? He says, I had to call him back. <laughs> it's only a joke. Another fellow says to the barman, he says, could I have a pint glass full of water to about an inch from the top and fill the last drop up with Guinness. I said, that's the most unusual drink. He says, you drink it if you had what I have. I said, what have you got? He says, 10p. <laughs> Another fellow sitting beside me, has no arms. He said, do you fancy a game of darts? I said, okay. I said, what will I do? He says, put the darts in my mouth. I did. I says, what will I do now? He says, throw the board at me. The fellow said to Delaney, I've never made love to my wife before I got married, did you? Delaney says, I don't know, what's her maiden name? <laughs> Another fellow says to the barman, he says, how much of the pies? He says, uh, two for three pound. He says to the barman, he says, how much for one? The barman says, two pound. He says, right, he says, I'll have the other one. <laughs> fellow says to me, do you talk to your wife when you're making love? I says, only when there's a phone handy. The lady says to the barman, I want two pints of Guinness, three pints of lager, four gin and tonics, eight whiskeys, two vodkas, and five packets of crisps. The barman said, would you like a tray with it? The lady says, why do you not think I've enough to carry? <laughs> then a girl slapped me in the face. All I asked her was, would you like a sniff of me, Vic? <laughs> the fellow standing at the bar, he's only one arm. And did you ever notice someone, if they only have one arm, they always have the sleeve in the pocket. They never have it hanging out. They have the sleeve in the pocket. And he had a wristwatch on the stump of his arm. I said, uh, would you have the right time, please? He says, it's a quarter past eight. I said, tell me, he says, why do you not wear your watch on the good arm? He says, how would I bloody wind it? <laughs> Another fellow walks in, he says to the barman, he says, could I have two pints of Guinness, one for me and one for the cripple in the corner? I says, I'm not a cripple. He says, you will be if you don't pay for my drink. <laughs> fellow walks in, he says, yeah, I'm having a hang in. <laughs> he says, certainly, sort of packed with crisps. And he opens the bag and he spreads them all along the counter. He says, you and me, I'm Yanni Han. Barman said, I beg your pardon. He says, I'm Yanni Han. Oh, he said, have I any salt to talk for a minute? He said, there's one short. <laughs> and there's two guys sitting in the pub. And they're sitting opposite a full length mirror. And one bullet says to the other, says, Mick, have a look over there. There's two fellas over there. They're dimming your bus. They're like our brothers. <laughs> and I said, pick up. He says, yes. He says, they're wearing the same caps and all. Hold on. He says, I'll go over and buy them a drink. He says, sit down for a minute. He says, there's one of them coming over here to buy us one. 
And it was a fancy dress in the pub, you see, and there was a girl standing beside Delaney, and she was completely covered in feathers. Delaney says, what are you supposed to be? She says, I'm a spring chicken. What are you? He says, I'm a packet of Paxo. <laughs> I was having a drink with a fellow the other night. He says, he says, do you know? He says, my wife's an angel. He says, you're lucky. He says, mine is still alive. <laughs> Just listened to the radio today, they said the police raided Paul Yates' house and they discovered anabolic steroids. There was no sign of the other kids. She said to the police officer, says, uh, what are you looking for? He says, we're looking for magic mushrooms. She says, she's not coming home from school today, she's staying with her family. <laughs> and I said to me, you know, he says, I think my wife is on drugs. So why do you say that? I said, just before I left today, the phone rang and I picked it up and the male voice said, is that dope gone yet? (laughs) Another fellow thinks I live in a lighthouse. He keeps ringing up asking, is the coast clear? (laughs) I see they've introduced a new pill for Catholics. It's an ordinary aspro. You put it in his sock. It makes him limp. (laughs) It's only a joke. What about Murphy? Got a new pair of cufflinks for Christmas. Solid gold they wear. He went out and had his wrists pierced. My wife got one of those indecent phone calls the other night, you know, the heavy breathing. And she's sitting in the bed and the phone rings and she picks it up. And there's a fella going, <sighs> And my wife, God love her, she's an asthmatic and she was in the middle of an attack at the other end of the phone and she was going, <sighs> The guy said, Mrs, did I call you or did you call me? A friend of mine from Kerry, he got a present of one of those new microwave tellies the other day. You can watch a three-hour movie in five minutes. <laughs> this woman walks into the butcher's in Moore Street in Dublin. She says to the butcher, Is that a pig's head I see in the window? She says, No, Mrs. It's a mirror. <laughs> she says, Where's the complaints department? He says, We haven't got one. You fat cow. <laughs> Another fellow walks in, the butcher says, have you got a sheep's head? He says, no, it's the only way I comb me hair. <laughs> Another fellow walked into the butcher's, the girl behind the counter, he says, a pound of fillet. She says, a pound you don't. <laughs> Friend of mine went to the doctor, he'd sore feet. The doctor examined him, he says, I'm afraid you have to wear a clean pair of socks every day for a week. At the end of the week, he couldn't get his boots on. Another woman went to the doctor, doctor examined her. She had a complete head of grey hair. He says, my God, he says, madam, that's a wonderful head of grey hair. Will you take your clothes off? She says, where will I put them? She says, in the corner on top of mine. (laughs) The examiner, he says, I can't understand her. You have a complete head of grey hair and you have no grey hairs down below. She says, I have no worries down there. Another fellow went to the doctor, the doctor examined him, he says, I can find nothing wrong with you, it must be the drink. He says, right doctor, I'll come back when you're sober. <laughs> Another patient walked into the doctor, the doctor says, what's wrong with you? The patient said, I- I'm ugly, everybody thinks I'm ugly. The doctor says, you're not ugly. He says, I know I'm ugly. The doctor says, you are a fine, strong looking man. He says, that's the problem, I'm not a man, I'm a woman. <laughs> Another guy sitting beside me, he's got two black eyes. I says, what's wrong with you? He says, uh, sinus. I'm suffering from sinus. I says, you mean sinus? No, he says, sinus. I was out with my girlfriend last night and her husband seen us. <laughs> woman goes into the doctor. The doctor examines her. He says, you're pregnant. She says, how will I have the baby? So the same way as you conceived. Oh, no, she says, not with me two legs out the back of a Toyota window. <laughs> I went into the doctor myself. The doctor examined me. He says, I think you have a grumbling appendix. I'll give you some painkillers. I said, can you give me some for the wife as well? She never stops grumbling. <laughs> he says, Sean, I've examined your wife and she has an acute angina. I said, I know, doctor, but what condition is her heart in? <laughs> There's a guy sitting beside me in the surgery and he keeps scratching his elbow. And he's scratching the life out of his elbow. I said to another fellow, I said, uh, What's wrong with that guy there? He said, he, he's suffering from piles. I says, why is he scratching his elbow? He says, he doesn't know his ass from his elbow.
So I went into the doctor. The doctor says, I'm afraid you'll have to be circumcised. I said, it's all right. I said, there's no skin off my nose. <laughs> but being a doctor, it's a wonderful job, really, isn't it? I mean, you can ask a woman into your room, tell her to take her clothes off, lie her down, examine her, and then send a bill for 50 pounds to her husband. <laughs> Why would you get a job like that? But you know, when you think back to years ago when we were in school, you know, school, I mean, it was fun, but it was tough. Remember the, the grammar classes? The little fella stood up, he says, Missy says, I ain't got no pencil. <laughs> says, Johnny, your grammar, I have got no pencil. You have got no pencils. They have got no pencils. We have got no pencils. Okay, miss, who's got all the bleeding pencils then? <laughs> and then the poems. Remember she used to make up little poems. Remember, she said, now, I want somebody to make up a little poem from the top of your head. Come on now, children, think, think, think. And this little boy stubby says, uh, my name is Dan, and, and when I grow up, I, I want to be a man, and I, I would like to visit China and Japan. He says, that's very, very good, Dan. Well done, well done. Now you can sit down. Anybody else? Little girl says, me, miss. He says, right, um, now Sadie. She says, my, my name is Sadie Brady, and when I grow up, I want to be a lady and have a baby. He says, well done, Sadie. That's terrific. Anybody else? And this little scruffy fellow stood up at the back. He says, me, miss, me. He says, my name is also Dan. To hell with China and Japan. And if Sadie Brady wants a baby, I'm our man. <laughs> it's only a joke. <laughs> now, children, says, you want somebody to make him a poem, and you must finish your poem on the word pistol. P-I-S-T-O-L, pistol. Okay, miss. I'll have a go, miss. Remember, Johnny, you must finish your poem on the word pistol. P-I-S-T-O-L. Okay, miss. Says, my daddy is a policeman. He wears a suit of blue. He always carries a truncheon and sometimes a pistol, too. So that's excellent. Anybody else? Another fellow stood up. He says, me, miss. Says, right, Jimmy, you must finish your poem on the word pistol. P-I-S-T-O-L. Pistol. Okay, miss. My daddy is no policeman. He has no suit of blue. He draws the doll at 12 o'clock and he's on the pistol too. <laughs> Dublin is a marvellous city, really. I mean, as I said earlier, you have people from all nationalities there. I mean, uh, we had a Chinese bin man the other day. A Chinese bin man. He's going around collecting the bins. And he goes to this house and there's no bin there. So he goes in the side entrance to investigate and there's this guy cutting the grass, little t-shirt, shorts, beautiful tan, and the Chinese fellow says, where you been? He says, I've been to the Canaries. No, 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 where you really been? He says, okay, I'm messing, I was on a sunbed. <laughs> met an American fellow the other day, had a meal with him, he says, you know, Sean, I was noticing in Ireland, your potatoes are very small. He says, back in the United States, our potatoes are that size. I says, we only grow ours to fit our mouths. <laughs> like the American fellow went into a hotel in Kerry, went up to the porter, he says, excuse me, sir, do you have a bellhop? He says, what? He says, do you have a bellhop? He says, what's one of them, sir? It's what he called a guy who carries your cases. He says, yourself. <laughs> he says, I'd like a room for the night. He says, sir, would you like a room with a bath or a shower? Why, uh, what's the difference? He says, well, a shower, you have to stand up. <laughs> the American guy is driving through Kerry, and he meets this Kerry man. He says, excuse me, sir, could you tell me the best way to get to Killarney? He says, are you driving or are you walking? He says, I'm actually driving. He said, that's the best way. <laughs> well, if you have any American visitors staying with you and you want to... Uh, give them a little tour around Dublin. The best way to do it is put them in the back of a Dublin taxi cab, because a Dublin taxi driver is well known for his humour and wit. And this American guy is going around Dublin in the back of a taxi. He says, uh, Tommy says, uh, have you got a Disneyland in Ireland? So he took him up to our House of Parliament. He says, uh, that building, he says, the House of Parliament. He says, Dal Aaron. He says, how long did it take to build it? He says, about uh, six years, sir. He says, back in the States, he says, we'd build it in six months. He's driving further through the city. He says, that's a fine building. He says, it looks like a hospital. He says, oh, yes, the Mater Hospital. 
So they have a fine building. He says, how long did it take to build it? He says, about uh, three years, sir. He says, back in the States, he says, we built it in three months. The taxi drivers had her up to here to come at the end of the tour, to come in down O'Connell Street, which is our main street. And he marvels says, driver, what's that building over there? He says, Jesus, I haven't got a clue. It wasn't there this morning. <laughs> He took him out through Clontarf. The driver says, uh, Brian Baru fought the Danes there 10-14. The American man looked at his watch. He says, by God, he says, we've just missed it. <laughs> so that night he picked him up at his hotel. He says, uh, I'd like to go to Clontarf again. He said, um, the seafront. He says, well, I'm a bit late for the battle. <laughs> like two American ladies were sitting in a Dublin taxi cab and they were discussing who are the best lovers in the world. And one of them said she thought it was the cowboys, and the other one said she thought it was the Jewish people. And one of them said, driver, um, what do you think? He says, ladies, he says, I think you're both right. By the way, driver, what's your name? He says, uh, Hopalong Goldberg. <laughs> Actually, America is a lovely place to visit. I went over there some time ago on holidays. I'm sitting on the plane, and there's a rabbi and the priest sitting in front of us, and the stewardess is handing out the meals, and she says to the rabbi, uh, would you like to try the pork? He says, young lady, I'd rather commit adultery. And the priest says, my God. He says, I didn't know we had a choice. <laughs> it's only a joke. <laughs> and I'm sitting beside my wife, and there's an American fellow on the other side, and my wife is a little bit deaf, and the American will says, uh, are you going to the United States on your vacation? He says, what did he say? I said, the gentleman said we're going to the United States on a vacation. I said, we're going to visit our daughter in New York. So I said, have you been to the United States previously? He says, what did he say? I said, the gentleman said that we've been to the United States previously. I said, we've been there three times in the last four years. So I said, what part of Ireland are you from? He says, what did he say? I said, the gentleman said, what part of Ireland are you from? I said, we're from Dublin. He says, I was in Dublin about 40 years ago. He says, and I went to a dance and I met a lady. And I had an affair with her for the duration of my vacation, three weeks to be exact. And by God, she was the coldest, most frigid fish I ever met in my life. He says, what did he say? He said he thinks he knows you. <laughs> We're sitting on the plane and the stewardess is handing out the landing cards. And Delaney is sitting opposite me and she hands him the landing card. It's the emigration card. And he says, uh, what are they, missus? He says, they are to do with emigration. You've got to fill it in. He won't be let off the plane. He says, I'm not filling anything in. She says, if you do not fill in the information on this, you won't be let into America. He says, give us your pen. Name, Mickey Delaney. Address, 23 Main Street, Bannon County, Kerry. Age, 36. Sex, once in Killarney. <laughs> You know, it was amazing with the newspapers. I was reading in the newspaper the other day, in fact, the Evening Herald, that there's a man knocked down by a car in Dublin every three hours. And he's getting fed up with it. <laughs> the woman went into the Evening Herald newspaper office in Dublin. She says, my husband is dead. I want to put an notice in the paper. She said, no problem, madam. It's 30 pounds a word. Oh, my God. She says, that's very expensive. I just put in there, uh, Paddy's dead. But he says, Madam, there's a minimum of five words. Uh, we'll just put in uh, Paddy's dead Toyota for sale. <laughs> Another fellow comes in, he says, I want to put a notice in the articles for sale. He said, No problem, sir, it's £10 an inch. I said, No, that's too dear. He says, I couldn't afford it. So, what are you trying to sell? He says, A 40 foot ladder. <laughs> but it's amazing in Ireland. People seem to die in alphabetical order. <laughs> I wonder does that happen in any other part of the world? It also said in the paper that thieves broke into a bank in Dublin, but the police sealed off all the exits, but the thieves escaped through the entrance. <laughs> Same thieves broke into a police station in Dublin and they stole all the toilet bowls. Now the police have nothing to go on. It also said in the paper that they found the skeleton of a 300-year-old man in the attic of a house in Dublin, and they realised that it was the world hide-and-seek champion. <laughs> it also said in the paper that a man streaked past 
two 70-year-old women in O'Connell Street. One of them had a stroke, but the other one was too slow. <laughs> one of the women said, what's he wearing? And the other said, I haven't got a clue, but whatever it is, it certainly needs ironing. <laughs> There's three young ladies at the Pearly Gates with their daughters. And they said to St. Peter, I says, can we come in? He says, you've no chance. When you were on earth, you were so fond of drink that you called your daughter Sherry. The second one says, what about me? He says, you've no chance. When you were on earth, you were so fond of money, you called your daughter Penny. And the third one says, come on, Fanny, let's get out of here before we're insulted. <laughs> I was at a nudist wedding last week. It's amazing at a nudist wedding, you can always tell who's best man. And they sat down in the church, it sounded like a round of applause. <laughs> there was an English fella, a Scotch fella, a Welsh fella, an Irish fella, having a drink in a pub. The English fella says, you know, chap, says, my son was born on St. George's Day. And as you know, St. George is the patron saint of England. He says, I christened my son George. The Scotch fella says, that's a coincidence, Jimmy. He says, my son was born on St. Andrew's Day. And as you know, St. Andrew is the patron saint of Scotland. He says, I christened my son Andrew. The Welshman says, boy oh, would you believe it? My son was born on St. David's Day. And as you know, St. David is the patron saint of Wales. He says, I christened my son David. And the Irish fellow says, Big Abby says, wait till I go home and tell Pancake about this. <laughs> That's like the Irish fellow went over to England and he walked into this pub, it was called the Pig and Whistle. He says, uh, could I have a pint of Guinness? He said, I'm sorry, sir, we don't serve Irishmen. He says, could I see the owner? Well, he says, this is a partnership. He says, there's two partners. I'm one of the partners. That makes me the owner, so you're not being served. He says, right. He says, could I have a word with Mr. Whistle? <laughs> two women sitting in a bar in Dublin, and one says to the other, Mary, are you a virgin? She says, no, not yet. There's another two women in the pub and they were talking about the dogs. One said to the other, says, my dog is so clever, he knows what you're saying to him. Exactly. The other one says, he's not as clever as my dog, my dog can read. He says, how can you prove that? He says, I was passing by a gate the other day and I said, wet paint, and he did. <laughs> so there was a quiz in the pub. This fellow was asked a question, he says, if I gave you two rabbits, a pair of rabbits, and a couple of rabbits, how many rabbits would you have? He says, seven. No, no, he says, think, he says again. He says, use your fingers. If I gave you two rabbits, a pair of rabbits, and a couple of rabbits, how many rabbits would you have? He says, seven. Look, he says, think. If I gave you two rabbits, a pair of rabbits, and a couple of rabbits, how many rabbits would you have? He says, seven. Look, he says, forget about the rabbits. We'll work on bottles of Guinness. If I gave you two bottles, a pair of bottles, and a couple of bottles, how many bottles would you have? He says, six. Right, he says, excellent, we'll go back to the rabbits. If I gave you two rabbits, a pair of rabbits, and a couple of rabbits, how many rabbits would you have? He says, seven. He says, good God, he says, how would you have seven rabbits? He says, I have a rabbit at home. <laughs> two women in a bar discussing another woman. One said, do you see that one over there? She's a trollop, and she's also a kleptomaniac. She says, you mean an infomaniac? No, a kleptomaniac. She can't stop stealing other people's husbands. <laughs> this fellow says to me, he says, my wife was unfaithful, terrible unfaithful woman. First it was the milkman, then it was the postman. Last week I found her in bed with the plumber. The lady said, do you need an electrician? <laughs> I walked into the kitchen the other day and there was my wife sitting watching me underpants going round the washing machine. I said, what are you doing? She says, the first time I saw any life in them. <laughs> What about the lane? He went to London to see the motor show he spent all day looking around the car park. <laughs> the next day he went around all the sports shops in London looking for a baseball cap or a peak at the back. <laughs> he got digs and he shouted down the stairs to the landlady. He says, there's no towel in the bathroom. He says, put your hands out the window. He says, I can't. I've taken a bath. <laughs> He's down having his dinner. She says, what's that fly doing in my soup? She says, the breaststroke. <laughs> she says, how did you find your steak? He says, I moved the chip and there it was. 
And another thing, he says, I was in the bathroom yesterday and there was no toilet paper. She says, you have a tongue in your head, haven't you? She says, I know, but I don't have a neck like a giraffe. <laughs> she said to him, now, tonight I have to put you in a room with another guy you have to share, because I'm very, very full, so you have to share. Now, this fellow has a dreadful habit of snoring, so you won't get asleep. He says, I get his sleep. She says, I guarantee you won't sleep, and I'll only charge you half price. He says, I'll get his sleep. He won't stop me sleeping. Come down the next morning, he says, well, did you get his sleep? He says, I had a great sleep. And she says, a marvellous sleep. He says, what about the other guy snoring? Well, she says, I went into the room. He was lying on his back, snoring his head off. I leaned over, gave him a kiss in the cheek, and he sat up all night watching me. <laughs> it's only a joke. Delaney goes to confession. He says, Father, he says, I have a terrible sin to confess. He says, the wife was leaning over the freezer the other day and I could see the top of her stockings and suspenders and I got overcome with passion and I had to make love to her there and then. Will I be barred from heaven? He says, not at all. He says, you won't be barred from heaven. Why do you ask? Well, he says, I'm barred from Tesco. <laughs> I remember when I was thinking of getting married to the wife, I went to see her father and I said, I'd like to marry your daughter. He says, have you seen her mother? I said, I have, but I still want to marry your daughter. <laughs> he says, will you take her for better or for worse? I said, I'll take her for better. If she gets any worse, I'll bring her back. <laughs> we went on honeymoon and we met another couple and we decided to do a bit of swapping. The next morning we woke up and I said to the other guy, I wonder how the girls are getting on. <laughs> So if you, if you ever want to laugh and you a bit of time in your hands, go down to the local courthouse. It's as good as any comedy club. I went into a court the other day and the judge is a little bit deaf, Judge O'Malley, and he says to this guy, he says, have you anything to save yourself? He says, bugger all, Your Honour. And the judge looks down to the clerk. He says, clerk, he says, what did he say? He said, he said, bugger all, Your Honour. The judge says, mother of God, I could have sworn I saw his lips move. <laughs> The defendant says, I don't recognise the court. The judge says, I'm not surprised it's been renovated since you last appeared here. <laughs> he says, I award your wife £100 alimony a week. He says, thank you very much. The judge, he says, I'll try and send her a few pounds myself. <laughs> Delaney is driving his turbo JCB GT through Manchester. He breaks down. He gets on the phone to the AA. He says, could you come out quick? He says, me turbo JCB GT has broken down. He says, what gear are you in? He says, me brown jacket and me grey trousers. <laughs> he had two pet monkeys, and when they died, he took them to the taxidermist to have them stuffed. The taxidermist said, would you like them mounted? Oh, no, he says, shaking hands will do fine. <laughs> Delaney is standing in the bar, and he says to the fellow beside him, he says, do you believe in free speech? The fellow says, I do. Then he says, can I use your mobile phone? <laughs> There's a guy sitting beside him, he's about 90 years of age, and Delaney says, do you believe in free love? He says, of course I do. He says, I've only got my pension. <laughs> Delaney said to his wife, I'm homesick. She says, but this is your home. He says, I know, I'm sick of it. <laughs> Salesman calls at Delaney's house and he says, do you remember me? And he says, of course I do. You're the fellow who sold me the double glazing. He says, I know, he says, but you haven't paid a penny off it yet. He says, I know, he says, it's your fault. You told me it would pay for itself within two years. <laughs> Delaney's wife went, went on holidays. When she came back, she thought the ceiling in the lounge was a bit high. And she said, Delaney, has anything happened to the ceiling? He says, Mary, he says, you told me you always wanted two rooms knocking into one, and I've done it. <laughs> He had an accident with the car. The car was destroyed by fire and he went down to the insurance company to collect his money and the guy in the insurance company said, we're not giving you the money, we're going to replace the car. And then he says, in that case, he says, cancel the insurance policy on my wife. <laughs> Delaney was in London, he was walking through Soho and there was a busker playing a trumpet and he was playing Danny Boy on the trumpet. He was going... <laughs> Delaney was standing on the sidewalk and he's crying his eyes out. The busker stopped him over and says, you must be Irish. Delaney says, no, he says, I'm a musician. 
O'Sullivan well, was out walking with Delaney and didn't Delaney fall down at the shoes well? O'Sullivan well, shouted down, Are you all right down there, Delaney? Did you break anything? He says, No, he says, There's nothing down here. <laughs> Delaney went for a job and the personal officer told him to fill in the questionnaire. Went down and he battered the doorman. <laughs> Delaney and the wife were sitting in the kitchen having a cup of tea. And he says to her, he says, Mary, will we try a new position tonight? She says, yes. You get in behind the ironing board and I lie on the settee and fart. <laughs> it's only a joke. <laughs> Delaney went into the fish and chip shop and he asked the guy, he says, would you have a cod's head for the cat? The fellow says, why? He says, you're doing a transplant. <laughs> He bought his granny a parrot for her birthday and he went the next day to see her. He says, how was the parrot? She says, it was lovely. It tasted like chicken. <laughs> I was in the pub the other day. There was a fellow sitting in the bar and his two feet were covered in bandages. I said, what happened? She says, I was after buying a tin of soup and I read the instructions and it said on the can, open can and stand in boiling water for 10 minutes. <laughs> Delaney was walking down O'Connell Street the other day and he was mugged and he fought the muggers off for 20 minutes, fought like a tiger, eventually they searched him and they found 20 pence. He said, and you fought like that for 20 pence? He says, I thought you were after the 50 pound in me sock. <laughs> I was in the graveyard the other day with my grandson and I come across a tombstone which said, here lies a politician and an honest man. My grandson said, Grandad, how did they get the two of them in there? <laughs> Another tombstone has said, Here lies Mary Murphy, who lived and died a spinster, returned unopened. <laughs> there was a friend of mine down in Kerry, he'd got three gorgeous daughters, lovely girls, but he wouldn't let the girls go out with any lads unless they were poets. So the girl said to the boyfriends, If you ever call up, knock on the door, my father answers, make up a poem, and the job is right. So there's a knock on the door one day, Riley opens the door, fellow stand there says, my name is Joe, I've come to take Flo to the show, will she go? He says, come in Joe, he says, I'm sure she'll go. Joe goes out with Flo, half an hour later there's another knock on the door, Riley opens the door, fellow stand there says, my name is Lance, I've come to take Nance to the dance, have you a chance? He says, come in Lance, he says, you've every chance. Lance goes out with Nance, half an hour later there's another knock on the door, Riley opens the door, fellow stand there says, my name is Tucker. She says, I'm sorry, she's not going out. <laughs> My little grandson said to me the other day, he says, Granddad, he says, can you make a noise like a frog? I said, why is that, son? He says, Grandma said, when you croak, we're all going to go to Disneyland. <laughs> there was a Pakistani arrested in Dublin for drunken driving. The police officer's blowing the dish. He says, no, 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 no. No bread the lies about me. Me got asthma, I cannot blow and do the bag. Roddy said, down to the station. Took him down to the police station. Sent for the doctor. The doctor says, give me your arm, I'm taking a blood sample. He says, no, 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 no. No No blood sample for me. Me hemophiliac. You take blood sample, I bleed to death. Oh, he's in that case, he says, it's the urine test. He says, put a sample in one of those jars on the mantelpiece. He says, uh, from this distance. <laughs> Not at all. He says, take it outside, do the business. She says, no, 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 no. Raise the Relations Act, 1969. You must not take piss out of Pakistani. <laughs> Friend of mine and his wife was out playing bingo recently and he had a little route around the house and he was cleaning out and came to a wardrobe and he discovered a box with 500 pounds and in another box there was two eggs. So when she came home, he said, Mary, did you enjoy the bingo? She says, I enjoyed it very much, John. But he said, look, he said, uh, I'm after being cleaning your wardrobe out and I discovered a box with two eggs in it. What did they signify? Well, he says, she said, it's like this. Um, Any time I was unfaithful to you, I put an egg in the box. Well, he said, Mary, we're married 40 years. Twice is not really much, I forgive you. But he says, what's the 500 pounds doing in the other box? Well, she says, every time I got a dozen eggs, I sold them. I was standing in my local pub the other day and there was a Kerry fellow standing beside me and he had this um, duck 
on a lead and he's walking him down the bar with the duck. He says, what are you doing with the duck? He says, I, I bought it for the father's farm. He says, look at the time. He says, it's only two o'clock. He says, I have four hours to kill. I'm after having a gallon and a half of stout and a few whiskies, and I'm half drunk. If I have any more drink, he says, I lose the duck. And there's no point in me going back to Killarney without that duck. If I lose that duck, my father will get out the shotgun and he'll still shoot me stone dead, and I wouldn't enjoy that. Well, I said, why don't you have a walk around the city, around the art gallery, museum, house apartment? He says, I, 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 I tell you, I says, I, I'm wild fallen. I can hardly walk. The feet are sore. I'm half drunk. Well, he says, why don't you go to the cinema? He said, it was up there. He says, they wouldn't let me in with the duck. I said, you didn't walk in with a duck on a lead. Well, how do I ever get him in? I says, hide him under your coat. He says, I've near a coat. He says, I've only got the trouser and the shirt. He says, hide him under your shirt. He says, you're trying to take the mick on me because I can carry 22 stone weight by. He says, I wouldn't get a canary on my shirt. Well, he says, hide the duck in your trousers. He says, I, I, I'll stick on your chin, you're making me. I said, I'm trying to help you. Get the duck, shove it down the front of your trousers, nobody you know. So he gets the duck, he shoves it down the front of his trousers, and he pays his money, and they let him in. And he's sitting watching the film. After about 20 minutes, there's two Dublin girls sitting beside him. One says, the other says, Rita, so what's wrong with you, Concepta? She says, what's wrong with me? He says, what's wrong with me? Look at the carry-on of the fella beside me. He says, what are you on about? He says, what am I on about? She says, the front of his trousers is all open. She says, don't be ridiculous. She what do you mean, don't be ridiculous? It's a big thing sticking up, waving all over the place. Ah, she says, if you've seen one, you've seen them all. Just ignore it. So I can't. This one's eating me crisp. <laughs> well, ladies and gentlemen, I've got to go now because of another show to do uh, next year. <laughs> If you're driving home, do make sure you have a car. <laughs> Don't drink and drive because you might spill some. <laughs> On the way home, watch out for drunks because I'm going to be walking. <laughs> As I say, it's nice to be important. It's far more important to be nice. You've been very, very nice to me. Thank you very much. Good night and God bless. <laughs> <laughs>